So, a Swiss watch brand that's won more awards in the past six years than, well, anyone else? Huh. What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here with the DWIS RC1 Automatic. And DWIS stands for Design Watch Independent Switzerland. And there are high expectations. So let's go take a closer look. Let's go. And here is the DWIS RC1 Automatic. And there is just so much to like about this watch and to appreciate. So where do I begin? Huh. Okay, well let's start with this one right here. And before we do get on with the dial, the dial is actually one of four things that really caught my eye at first where I just had to have this watch. And it is also the blue, really mesmerizing blue color dial as well as this unique case shape. It is just a really unique looking case with really sharp angles. It is just a really stunning looking case. And of course the fourth thing is this really silky smooth bracelet. Okay, so let's get back to the dial. So the first question is an obvious one. How do we read the time? How can we tell what time it is? And while Dwiss has an RS1 model that uses a color disc to tell the time, and that's a little bit trickier, this RC1 is a little more traditional and still very unique. And this is actually my preference. So all we really need to know is our Roman numerals. And the Roman numerals are right there at the top, right above Dwiss. So here we can tell the time is 8.35. So uh, wherever the right up there at the top where the uh, Dwiss logo is, whatever Roman numerals is there, is the hour. And the minute is uh, right here, the sort of little chubby <laughs> triangle that is really cool. And it works on a disc. So where do we think the seconds hand is? Because this actually took me a good minute to figure out where the seconds is. And that's because it is actually integrated with the minute hand right there. So can we see that it's rotating and and really doing its thing really smoothly with 28,800 vibrations per hour or four hertz. So that is really cool if we can see how it's, we can see it rotating. I, I like that, that is that is really unique. Uh, this blue dial that I really like because it, it looks like there are two different shades. We have, or actually maybe three different shades. So on the center, let me get that off there. So on the center uh, portion of the dial and above uh, where the hours are with the Roman numerals, it's a really matte blue. But then uh, around there, around the left-hand side of the dial and the right-hand side of the dial, we see a really nice blue texture. And then on the, the brushed aluminum portion, right where uh, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock connect, uh, it, it creates a really nice, uh, really different type of shade because of the brushed aluminum that is also frames the date and by the way the date is also hand applied so it looks like there are different shades of blue on there really cool and that really caught my attention while we're on the dial here i also really like these four screws that are on the bezel and they are perfectly aligned with each other meaning the the one to to either side of it so this is perfectly aligned with this one this one is perfectly aligned with this one twist really created a really a really nice work of art. So for wondering how a watch can become such a work of art, well that's because the owner Raphael Miranda was a professor where he taught watch design in Milan, Italy and he's won a lot of awards for it. And he became the owner of Dwiss Watches, his own company, since 2011. And you know, back to the dial, on the front right here where we see some text, uh, it is really subtle but that is where we would see normally on the case back, but instead he also integrated that nicely along the uh, minute track there where what we would think we would normally see on the back where it says automatic and uh, the sapphire crystal 25 jewels design watch independent Switzerland. So all of that text, what would be on the back is right on the front. It's, it's really clever and is not obvious at all. And there at 6 o'clock is the Swiss made label and that's because this is a fully Swiss made watch and that is really important for a lot of watch fans. And I know this is a little late in the video for me to introduce the specs because I usually introduce it at the beginning of each video. But I wanted this watch uh, to have a fair chance because it is a really special watch. And I know that the one area of the dimensions might be a little alarming for some people so let me let me explain what i mean so let me start with the lug to lug it is just 50 millimeters from lug to lug 13 millimeters tall and with a 24 millimeter lug width and now let me get on with the dimensions which i can hear some of you saying what 
and that's because it is 45 millimeters. <laughs> but it is not really 45 millimeters, and that's because it is really wearable. So let me let me get a wrist shot to show you what I mean. So as you can see here, it fits my six and a half inch wrist really nicely because no part of the watch extends beyond the wrist bone, which is uh, from here to here, which is what we use to determine if a watch is too big for us. It takes up a little bit more real estate going towards the shoulder, but no part of the watch uh, extends past my wrist bone. So if you have a six and a half inch wrist or larger, this is going to wear really nicely. And I think it's because of the uh, shorter lugs and um, how thin it actually is. So let me put that into perspective. Uh, let me just take this off here. So to put the... Uh, the thickness into perspective, the 40 millimeter Rolex Submariner is also 13 millimeters, what, which is what this is. So it is really magnificent to see uh, how thin this watch is to actually make this size work. All right, getting back to the case, look how beautiful of a side profile that is with its really nice chamfers and a really, really nice signed crown there. It looks like it, it pops out with another layer. It is really nice. And on the side profile, we can see that it goes in pretty deeply up to where the lugs begin. It's just a really, really cool side profile with this polished and uh, frosted finish. So we just saw me take off uh, the bracelet and we can see the, how well made this double security clasp bracelet is. Watch, listen to it close really nicely and crisply. So not only does this bracelet look really cool and really nice, it is actually really well made. There isn't any anything that is not thought out or well made with the RC1. Actually, there is one thing it doesn't have that I wouldn't mind any watch having, and that's loom. There isn't any loom on this. But then again, we don't admire a Rembrandt in the dark, right? There are two nice crown guards on either side of the crown, and a nice matching blue rubber layer on the crown to provide an easy grip. And right, now let's get a look at this movement. What is powering the RC1? Well, it is an ETA 2824, and Dwist did a really nice job finishing this movement with its custom rotor and a lot of Prolage and Coast de Genève finishing on there. And it looks like they've even added some blued screws. It is a very attractive and reliable movement and because of the text that would be on the case back that is on the front instead instead on the back it simply says Dwiss RC1 uh, automatic limited edition this is number 51 of 199 and it is water resistant to 200 meters a, a really nice and attractive job with this movement nice job by Dwiss I think this is a great time for additional wrist shots I'll be right back and Mickey will keep you company It's also available in an all black and white and both models are also available on either a strap or a bracelet. The retail price for this model is about $1,600 but because Every third Monday in January is actually called Blue Monday, and I had no idea about that until Raphael told me about that. And because Blue Monday falls on this Monday, January 21st, uh, Dwiss is having a special promotion uh, with a discount on any blue model, including this, meaning any blue dial watch. And I will put a link to his uh, sign up page so you can find out what discount that will be. I don't even know what that discount will be, but I will put a link so you can subscribe so you can learn what that price will be for that promotion that is coming up this Monday. Either way, I know it's going to be a discount. I think $1,600 is a very fair price for an extraordinarily well made Swiss watch that is just really unique and just very well executed. Uh, uh, across the board. So whatever price, mystery price that will be, uh, should be a really fair deal for everybody because this is just an extraordinary watch. And I, I wanted to point out one other thing. Uh, you know, for me, the, the benchmark for brush finishing is the legendary Audemars Piguet's Royal Oak. That is the benchmark for his brushed finishing. So I'm not sure if I should say this. Do it. But because uh, out of respect for the APRO, I won't say that this is better th finished than that, but I will say it is actually as good or as nice as the RO. The brushed work on this is quite extraordinary. And we're back with 
some final thoughts on DeWiss and the RC1. And before Raphael started DeWiss, he designed over 100 watches for 15 different brands before starting his own company, DeWiss, in 2011. And we know how difficult it is for any Doom brand to receive any recognition, let alone winning a legitimate award in, in its only its second year in production. And that's what happened with Twist. He won his first design award in 2012. And ever since then, Twist continued to win awards in 2016, 2017, and two awards in 2018. So Twist is obviously doing something right. Raphael isn't just limiting the twist, no, twist to the European markets. He's actually taking his talents worldwide and that greatly benefits us watch fans. He uses a wide range of movements. He has a quartz, the ETA, and a tourbillon. And I think the obvious question is, if he has a tourbillon, why doesn't he use an in-house movement for either the RS1 or the RC1? But I think that answer is obvious. If he did, the cost of these watches would easily be two or three times more than what they are, which would kind of defeat the purpose of what we're trying to where know what he's trying to accomplish which is proving that he can make a quality swiss made watch at an accessible price so instead he nicely finishes a trusted and workhorse of a movement which is the eta 2824 you know and i can't even think of any other mainstream swiss watch that even comes close to the build quality and design at this price point one other thing i personally like about Raphael is even though his watches have won all these accolades his head never swelled I mean, his Grail watch isn't even his own brand. It's Vacheron Constantine. I can't remember which model it was, but it's refreshing to see his respect for other brands. My point is, he doesn't take himself too seriously, even though he is seriously talented. So hopefully we can continue to support Dwiss. And if you like what you saw today, again, I will leave a link to his landing page where we can learn what that special promotional price for Blue Monday, January 21st will be. I truly, I have no idea what that is going to be. I'm really excited about it though, but Raphael completely left me in the dark. Hello? Hello? Okay, there we go. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you the next time. And Dwiss stands for design and it's almost impossible to win an award in your in your second seat. And he's designed over uh, one hundred one yeah.